um, enjoying the phone being on video for some reason. Um, maybe I'll get some more information on that. Um, but I was saying before that the um, anyone who drives, as I said, I did, um, you know, a, a 228 um, coupe or a, you know, a 430, anything like that. It's not the not the six cylinder. Um, you wonder if it's worth um, spending the extra to get the six cylinder engine. Uh, yes, are you? You're, you still have a fun car. Uh, a base BMW to me is more fun to drive than so many competitors. Here's the one that just decided to, to pull out. No rhyme or reason. Totally okay. There's a mile of empty road behind me. Um, are you are you missing out on the experience? No. Is it worth it? If you're an enthusiast, to me it is. The, the six-cylinder engine is just, this inline is so enjoyable. It's so smooth. It sounds so good. Um, it's almost too good. Um, I, recent reviews that I was watching of this car, um, and, and granted, much respect for all the other YouTube channels and uh, reviewers and journalists out there. Um, I'm hoping to give you feedback from someone who does not drive cool cars on a regular basis. Um, I'm just an everyday enthusiast um, driving the closest thing to my dream cars as I can. Um, you know, but I will agree one of the things that they've said from the other, from cars I have experienced is this car is almost so, so good with its performance and it's effortless and you don't feel quite as engaged. Um, you don't have to, it's not a manual. Um, it gathers speed so fast that you, you don't have to work for it. I mean, you can be going 90 miles an hour so easily. It's like criminal territory. Um, honestly. Um, I've had this thing over 100 um, before and it felt like I was going, you know, 60 miles an hour. Uh, it's 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 crazy how fast. I think they BMW claims it's in the low fours for 0 to 60, but I've seen um, videos people have, have clocked it in the like 3.7 range and it's uh, easily, I, I can see that easily. I've felt it. It's, it's, it's crazy. And really the, the most exciting times that you can experience this car is when you're really on it um, and you can't do that on enthusiast roads you really can only do that on highways which to me is not as exciting um, merging onto the highway can be very exciting um, I might actually be doing that shortly here um, and you get to maybe hear some of that uh, fake noise um, but as I said I've, I've had the windows down and I have I have heard the real noise a turbo whistle um, the pops the bangs and it really does this thump on um, hard acceleration uh, up changes um, which is just cool I, I don't really know it's it's you know back in the past I think they talked about um, I don't really know how it works maybe uh, my engineer friends uh, and followers can can tell me how that works um, it's almost like it drops like a little bit of extra fuel in there that it just kind of gulps um, Either way, I don't care. It's a fun experience, fun noise. Um, dealing with afternoon traffic here. Um, gonna be going through some residential area before I get onto the, the highway. Um, I honestly prefer um, going the, the longer way, the more enthusiastic, I guess we'll go, more enthusiastic roads. Um, I like the curves, I like the sounds, I like the sights. Um, what else? Bear with me a moment. I'm having a brain fade. But yeah, my goals of the, the, the channel is to um, get into to more cars. I want to experience more cars. If there's anyone in the northeast um, parts of Massachusetts that want um, are willing to share uh, their vehicle for a test drive, I would love to experience other vehicles, um, change my opinions of things. Um, maybe you will, maybe you won't. Um, but I'm open to pretty much uh, anything you want to throw at me. If it has four wheels, I, I'd love to drive it. I'd love to experience it. I love quirky, fun, slow cars. Huge fan of Doug DeMiro's videos. Um, so many others that I can recommend and, and list um, that I've watched um, and have given me the inspiration to, to give this a shot myself. Um, there's just so many good, so much good content uh, out there that it, I just love 
to watch other people's opinions. Sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't. Um, most of them have a lot more experience in a variety of vehicles than I have, so I have no choice but to more or less um, accept their opinions until I get to enjoy it myself. There's some kind of classic MG, very cool. Um, driving along this the uh, uh, Merrimack River here. There's a lot of marinas, a lot of cool boats. Um, I'd love a boat. I don't know much about boats. Um, you know, speaking of other modes of transportation, we just talked about, uh, I said I drive, love to drive anything with four wheels. Um, I'm not into motorcycles. I have a lot of appreciation for them. Um, I use the analogy um, that motorcycles are like women to me, being a gay man. Um, I have a lot of appreciation for the beauty of motorcycles, the thrill of motorcycles. I just don't see myself riding one. Um, I do love analogies. Uh, get used to that. I'll beat you to death with them. Um, but hopefully you will, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the channel. Um, maybe, maybe I will experience a motorcycle at some point. Um, getting used to driving with, uh, just using my phone, uh, on the windshield here. Um, it's kind of blocking some of my view. So if you see, see me kind of like looking around, it's, uh, getting used to, getting used to having a screen on the windshield here. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of bouncing. Could be better. Probably, probably not terrible. Let's hope. Hopefully I look okay. I'm a little bit vain. You know, it happens. Um, Maybe that's where I will differ from some of the other YouTubers. I think most of them are um, heterosexual men um, and women too. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't uh, homosexual uh, journalists out there, but you know, I'm one of them. I'm open. Doesn't bother me. Nothing offends me. Uh, if you have any questions about it, need someone to talk to, I'm here for you. Uh, <laughs> But, like I said, it's not going to be about that. Uh, uh, you might guess from the outfits that I sometimes wear that um, I like fashion, too. I like art. Um, I love music. Uh, guilty pleasure when it, some people might ask about music and what I enjoy. Um, I love everything. Really, the only thing that I'm not into is uh, much hip-hop or rap. Um a more classic rock, uh, current pop, um, guilty pleasures for music, aside from like the 90s music. Um, I absolutely in love and enjoy uh, film scores. Um, that's a weird thing I love. Um, I love classical music. I, I learned to love that and appreciate that in college. It was easier for me to uh, concentrate on my studies, uh, listening to less lyrical um, music. Um, so that's where that came from. And I think I love the excitement of, um, of film scores. Uh, right, <laughs> right now on my screen, um, when I made this video, I was still listening to um, uh, The Thieving Magpie, um, which came up on the Clockwork Orange uh, <laughs> soundtrack, um, which is actually uh, an idea I had for uh, Halloween uh, this year. It ne never fails. I don't think I'm going to go to a party and then last minute um, I get an invite for a Halloween costume party and I'm never prepared. This year I was listening to the Clockwork Orange soundtrack and dressing as, uh, going as Alex um, from Clockwork Orange seems like a fun possibility. A uh, very dark character in a brilliant uh, movie from the 70s with a great soundtrack. Um, I don't know, that particular song... Um, makes me think of the scene where they um, play Hogs of the Road, um, and I think listening to soundtrack um, scores sometimes um, reminds me of the film. It kind of almost in a weird, nerdy way, like, puts me in the film, and sometimes it makes for spirited driving um, a little bit more fun. Here we are on a fun, uh, curvy road along the river here. Um, supposed to speed too much here, so I'm not going to go too crazy. Um, a lot of residential. 
Um, I don't want to be one of those people that gives other enthusiasts a bad name uh, by being obnoxious on the roads. I like to be respectful. I know we should keep it to the track, but some of us don't have the luxury of uh, hopping on a track uh, whenever to enjoy a car to its full ability, so we kind of have to squeeze out the best of it on whatever roads we can find. Um, gorgeous day. A um, little too hot for my preference. It has cooled down, but this summer has been hot. We haven't had a lot of rain. I really, unfortunately, don't think anyone can deny climate change at this point. It, it, it is what it is. We need. I am fully on board with doing everything we can to preserve the planet. Um, we only get one, <laughs> and we don't want to wreck it for the next generations. Um, I think it was Jay Leno that I was listening to an interview once, and he was talking about the future of motoring, and he was talking about um, hybrid vehicles, and um, I think hydrogen was the actual video, I think it was from Top Gear, um, before I went to Grand Tour, favorite show like any other uh, journalist, car journalist out there, I'm not calling myself a car journalist, hoping, um, but I mean, that's the dream job. Uh, but anyway, it was Jay Leno that was discussing the fact that um, the future of motoring, um, when we go electric or hydrogen or whichever direction we go, um, those are going to be the daily drivers um, that will hopefully free up the roads for um, more of the enthusiast driver. We're going to have classics. We're going to still have combustion vehicles. Um, they won't be able to make new anymore. It'll become part of motoring history. Um, but it'll be that much more special. I think Jay Leno used the analogy of, of horses. Um, you know, they were main source of transportation hundreds of years ago. Um, and the vehicle, um, the motor vehicle freed up um, horses to be more of a recreation. And that's what I'm hoping the combustion vehicle um, will be in the future. Um, electric cars, will they will be fun. Um, I've had the, the ability, the, uh, I've been lucky enough to, to enjoy some um, test drives in electric cars. Not long term, um, I would enjoy more. Uh, but I think that there is potential. Um, there, it, it is going to be a good future for the motoring enthusiasts. Um, I, it's not all sad to me. Um, I think we're, I think we're going to be in for um, some exciting things to come, um, and it will also change our perspective on um, some of the cars we're in now and, and the history of combustion engine cars, um, and I look, I look forward to it. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about, um, briefly talk about, you know, why I love cars for my friends and family that might be supporting me that don't, um, that don't quite understand the obsession or the passion that I have for cars, uh, along with so many other people. Um, I can't fully explain it, um, but to me, you know, vehicles to some people are, you know, they're an appliance. They're, they're no better or no more exciting than a washer and dryer or a refrigerator. Um, but to me, uh, uh, the right vehicle is... It's, it's an extension of yourself, your personality. Um, it, it can be a fashion statement. It can be, um, it can be viewed as, as artwork. Um, not so much new cars. Perhaps in the future there are some new luxury and supercars that will be viewed as art. Um, as far as new cars like the Ferrari Roma, anything uh, from Aston Martin for the most part, these are cars that in the future will be viewed as, as, as art. I mean, they're, they're gorgeous cars. They have function, but they have style. Um, and, and you don't have to be a millionaire or billionaire to enjoy um, cars that are beautiful. To me, this M240 is, um, I, I think it's a beautiful car. Um, people people will disagree, but that's art. Um, it's, a, it's a matter of opinion. And, um, but, you know, my passion for cars is, is the, the art, the design. Um, Subaru Forester driving the other way, that's an appliance car. I mean, that's fine. It serves its function. It's a reliable vehicle, uh, especially in New England. I mean, Subaru is like the unofficial car of New England. I mean, but they make the WRX an, uh, an amazing enthusiast car. Um, so car companies get it, but I also know that they have a business to run. They need to make money. Um, but I so much appreciate the companies that still make a car for the enthusiasts. 
Um, but like my fiance, for example, Juan, he, he drives a Subaru. Perfect choice for a New England driver. It's all wheel drive, it's reliable, it's easy to, to drive. Um, and I don't think that he's gonna come around to being an automotive enthusiast. He absolutely loves road adventures with me um, and we have a ton of fun and he's starting to see where my passion comes from. We have discussed ordering him um, a Mini Cooper S. Um, he really wants mustard. Um, Mini has, I think it's volcanic orange or yellow. Um, hopefully they bring that back. Maybe we'll have to wrap it. Um, but we started building one of those. I think we ended up choosing British Racing Green over Cognac. And he's now appreciating the fact that a car can be an extension of yourself and it can be, um, it can be fun. You know, some people just haven't driven fun cars and they just view driving A to B as just something that you do um, that isn't supposed to be fun. I mean, on the roads, there's only so much you can do. Uh, S2000 right there, veteran, thank you for your service. Um, love the S2000, I've never driven one. I've always wanted to, always wanted a Roadster. Um, for the longest time, I said I was gonna get a Z4. Um, never, never did. This car really makes me think of a Z4, like a daily Z4. Um, it's got the engine, it's got the long, the long front end. Um, it has back seats, but you're sitting very far back uh, in the chassis. It's very much classic coupe, and I really love the design for that. But I've always wanted a Roadster, and, and, and someday I will. It kills me to see people um, driving Roadsters or convertibles with the top up. I mean, what's the point? I have, uh, granted, when it's ex extensive heat, I, I get it. But most of the time, it'll be a gorgeous day, and I see someone with the top up. I'm like, what's the point? I mean, I'd have the top down with a freaking with a, with a hat and a scarf on in the winter time. I just love the open air experience. Um, if I wasn't filming this, I'd have the sunroof and the windows down. Usually my hair is crazy and all over the place. Um, I just love the air. Maybe it's because I'm an Aquarius. I don't know. I'm not much of a Zodiac person, but I do love the open air experience and the sounds that come along with it. If I could afford a, uh, some kind of um, supercar, I'd always go for the Spider. I'd have to have it. I know the rigidity of the chassis and everything else as far as performance uh, may be lacking. Technology's come so far now that um, it's not as much of a problem, but um, most of the time you're not going to take a car like that on the track. Most of us don't. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I just have to have that open air experience and maybe this channel will still be going when I get to get to enjoy one and you can come along with me. Um, what is it, Wednesday? I think it's also like Powerball day. I'm not much of a, a gambler, but I heard it's big, so perhaps I should buy a ticket. Um, I've always had the idea that uh, someone's like, what would you do if you won the lottery? And I tell them uh, I would create a YouTube channel on um, someone who spends their lottery wins probably not responsibly, uh, but I bet you'd watch. It'd be self-investment. I'd invest in myself, and I think people would watch. Don't steal my idea, unless you win the lottery. Then you can pay me off for my idea, one way or another, but that's my idea. CRV, old CRV. You know what? It's hilarious that I don't understand. Maybe it's the town I live in, um, and I think it's uh, like a subcar culture uh, in the area, but I have seen more old CRVs that are lowered and modified, often modified with modern Honda Accord or Civic rims, like the 19 inch. It's very strange, very strange, and it kind of works with some of them, but um, but it's, it's strange. I, I'm, I'm digging it, you know? They're enjoying themselves. Would I want one? No, but they're enjoying themselves. It's another form of enthusiastic driving. Um, on that topic, I'm really not much of a modification person. Um, I really enjoy keeping cars stock. Um, nothing against people that modify their cars. Some do it very tastefully. But for the most part, I'm one of those people that believes that a car was engineered to mostly the best of their ability. I know that there's marketing issues and that they can't make some cars better than one that's more expensive. But for the most part, I try to believe and trust that engineers have, have done their work on a, on a performance vehicle and that it's not my job. I don't have the knowledge. You know, there are some mechanics and people that that's their aftermarket is their 
their business and they're amazing at what they do and maybe someone can lend me some uh, vehicles that have been modified and I can show my appreciation. But for me, keeping cars unmodified um, is what I prefer to do. Um, I love going on like cars and bids or some or uh, bring a trailer and seeing these unmodified older cars with low mileage. No idea why people do that. I'm glad they do because it's really cool to see low mileage enthusiast vehicles. Um, but I love that when they're when they're stock. You, we all know that a 10, 15, 20 year old vehicle that's been modified. Uh, I, I wouldn't buy one. I wouldn't go near it. Who knows? You know, it's had a hard life, um, probably. Uh, here, we're coming up on the highway. Um, so for the most part, yeah, I keep my cars um, unmodified. Uh, possibly some M Performance uh, upgraded rims I'll do. Um, not that I don't like the ones that I have. Um, I did curb rash one. I am ashamed to say I've never really done that before, but being now in a more urban environment, it happened. Um, and now my OCD is gonna go a little crazy. But here we are getting on the highway. Um, ton of traffic, so I'm not gonna be able to really be too enthusiastic with my entry onto the highway. Um, but maybe we'll be able to get a little bit of sound. traffic not a lot of high hopes so possibly we're gonna um, just do some more vlog and uh, go from there maybe after this truck goes by you do feel low in this car it, it feels very much like a sports car blinker not as obnoxious as previous BMWs uh, we all know how rough they were kind of like the gear shifter they never really they always go back to the same position Let's do a little bit of an overtake here. That was definitely, um, we'll say a little over the speed limit, because um, I don't want to make myself criminal. I mean, I'm not perfect, but uh, we'll just call that necessary to speed up to traffic here. People in Massachusetts definitely drive pretty quickly. I'm just going with the flow officer. Luckily, knock on wood, I'm kind of counting on the fact that the um, police departments, um, again, thank you to any officers um, out there, um, police, EMS, uh, any of these uh, workers, thank you for what you do. Um, but I am almost counting on the fact that they're probably understaffed like anyone else. I feel for them. Um, but the roads, more or less police free. So knock on wood, I really haven't got pulled for speeding. I do try to be responsible. I don't do anything aggressive. I'm very careful about my overtaking. I don't cut people off, I don't tailgate, unless you are, there's a stinger. We all know that if, uh, if it wasn't about the badge, any enthusiast would just buy a stinger. They're beautiful, maybe the quality isn't the best, but they're good looking, they have a great engine, all you need. Um, but yeah, I'm, res I'm a very respect, I share the road well, I think. Uh, I don't cut people off, I don't tailgate. Biggest pet peeve anywhere are people that don't have lane etiquette, that don't use their mirrors. If someone is behind you, clearly going faster than you, get out of the way. Um, it's not your job to police me. Um, it's your job to let me use the road as I see fit. I, uh, it's my responsibility to keep myself and others safe. Um, but please, get out of the way. It's more dangerous for me to have to try to get around you than if you would just move over and go with the flow that you're clearly wanting to do um, that the, the middle lane is, is going. I think someone... Um, I think someone shared a meme once that was uh, in a three lane highway, the, the right lane was the speed limit, the middle lane was up to 80, and the left lane was 80 and above. And famously for Massachusetts traffic, we will all go from 90 miles an hour to 40 uh, because of roadworks, which um, there are not roadworks going on right now. Um, usually that's at night, um, but people somehow just cannot think quick enough to stay at speed and get through um, these 
roadworks. Um, not saying that we should speed through roadworks, uh, but I don't think we need to be going 34 miles an hour through. Um, but clearly people panic. There's a lot more people on the road here, and it's just what happens. I'd be curious to look up some kind of uh, theories on how traffic builds up. Um, I know it doesn't take much to slow everything down. Um, I just hate to be the one caught in it. Almost to my exit though, so um, this vlog will probably uh, probably wind down here. Um, but I hope that I gave you um, a good example of what my goals are. Um, it's more or less my personal opinions of, of my car, other cars, um, car enthusiasm. Is that a word? Being a car enthusiast. My opinions of being a car enthusiast. Um, some spotting. Um, even if I, if I can get shots of these cars, I definitely will. Um, I love to photograph cars. Um, I don't mind being the creep that takes pictures of them. If anyone says anything, um, I'll tell them what I'm doing. I don't think many people would have a problem if anyone wanted to take a picture of my car because of the color or whatever. I'm not gonna think it's weird. I mean, uh, that's like people that, I mean, who would get annoyed driving like a Lamborghini um, in a crazy color and not getting attention? I mean, it comes with the territory. If you date a supermodel, people are gonna look. I mean, you're not gonna get uh, upset about it unless you have some weird control issues. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that I'm free of those, but I think I've come a long way. I think it helped when I got sober. It's another part of me. I'm not gonna be really uh, talking about that too much, but um, one fun fact about myself is um, I've been sober over three years. Um, if it's something, another stinger, um, if it's something that you've uh, thought about, um, it's probably one of the best decisions I've, I've made in my life. I feel healthier. I don't feel controlled by a substance. Um, marketing and, and culture tell us that you can't have fun um, without some kind of cocktail or beer. Uh, coming from Vermont, there's there's breweries and, and craft beers everywhere, festivals. I get it, you know, if I could handle having, enjoying a drink for what it is, then I would probably still be drinking. But with the things that happen, I mean, it can, it's excuses, but you know, with the stresses and anxieties of the world, I personally couldn't handle just drinking casually. It became a daily, it became unhealthy, um, and it affected my, my life. Um, so one of the best decisions I've, I've done, I don't do it alone. Um, if anyone actually wants more information about how I stay sober, um, feel free to always, um, reach out, private message me. Um, I, I have a complete open book. Again, I can't, uh, stress enough that nothing, nothing offends me. Nothing bothers me. There's no question that's off limits for me. Um, you know, if I don't have the information or if I'm wrong with something, I'm fine with that. Totally fine with that. Um, a couple of, um, I have an X5 and an X3 behind me, both in black, and it's kind of funny to see um, both of the designs next to each other because even being uh, an enthusiastic BMW driver, I struggle sometimes to make out the difference between some of the SUVs. Um, they have a place uh, in marketing. Uh, they're impressive. When I did my um, little bit of a tour around Lime Rock Park um, a weekend or so ago, I was behind two um, M Performance SUVs, an X5 and an X3, and you know they have the same engine that this car has. Granted, more more weight, um, probably not much more than this. It's a heavy car, um, but they they really they clearly were performing well. Uh, and I don't think that anyone that goes that direction for an everyday driver is going to miss out on much. I just like the sports car feel. Um, much more enjoyable to me. Um, I like being closer to the road. I, some people are like, I want to feel like I can, uh, I'll survive in an accident and I can, I can drive over anything and, and, you know, I could go off road if I need to. We all know that these people don't, they don't need the space. Um, I'm the one that made the right choice. Let's, I mean, I, I get A to B in a fun, good looking car. If I need more space, that's what the other vehicle's for. Or just be more friendly with your neighbors and friends and family. Borrow their truck. It's what I do. Buy them some gas, buy them some beer, buy them something that they enjoy and borrow their vehicle. I mean, I think it was Jeremy Clarkson that on Top Gear. Uh, I love the analogy he used. I think he was reviewing, um, what was he reviewing? 
interviewing, I think he was, they were talking about like um, midsize SUVs or whatever and how kind of boring they are or whatever and saying that um, like the T, he was, I think he was comparing the Tiguan to the GTI and he was saying that buying a Tiguan versus a GTI is like uh, wearing ski boots all year um, because you might go skiing in the Alps uh, a few times a year. Um, it's exactly like why wouldn't you just enjoy the GTI get a ski get, get a, a rack for it or put the back seats down um, you don't need the SUV like why I mean if you truly have if you live an outdoor life and you need the space you have kids and family I get it I don't I don't need the back seats they're just for storage I have pulled people back there before not very successful you have to move the front seats forward and it's kind of awkward for everybody it makes me look like a bad driver but it's because I'm in my uh, driving position I'm not comfortable with um, so I really try to avoid that um, and and there's off-road enthusiasts I would love to experience some some enthusiast off-road vehicles um, I would I, I'd love it if I if I had my choice of any SUV right now it would be the new Land Rover Defender um, I just I love the look of that car um, it's like a Corella DeVille looking um, Cadillac Seville I don't remember what you would call that but it had like the sloped back very classic and it looked like it was in great shape see I have appreciation for for any type of fun vehicle um, I love cars and coffee I'll have a lot of photo um, photograph content um, on my Instagram from cars and coffee events um, BMW CCA things are fun. It's fun to talk to like-minded people, but for the most part, it's boring to me. I want to go to, I want to go to car shows and meets where there's a variety. I want to see all kinds of different things. Uh, I'm passionate about everything, um, and I really hope to make a lot more contacts and friends and network with people both locally and abroad. Um, it's a great culture. Um, I, I, I joined the Roadster app, um, R-O-A-D-S-T-R, um, I'll put a link below, um, I requested to possibly be an ambassador for, for that app, um, I know there's similar ones out there, um, but it's very cool if you're into social media, um, I mean, it's essentially like it's Instagram or Facebook, but it's, it's you and your car or vehicles, you know, if you have a collection, um, to share photos, um, good driving roads for those spirited drives. Um, it's really good for networking. I highly recommend it. A um, little bit of a plug there. Not sure really how that works, but if I enjoy something, I'll share it with you. Um, I'm obviously not getting paid uh, to plug anybody right now, but if I appreciate an app or a content creator, um, happy to share um, plugging their pages. Um, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this content today, learning a little bit more about me, my thoughts on motoring, BMWs, and other enthousia uh, enthusiast vehicles. Uh, I'm coming home now, I don't want to give away too much about where I live personally. I'll just say that there's four or five speed bumps that are very much annoying. They have a place. Uh, I get it there would be people flying through the community at obscene speeds. Um, I promise I wouldn't if they took them away, but I don't think we're going to get that lucky. Um, I've seen a lot of lowered cars, uh, neighbors that really struggle to get over them. Some people are almost like teeter-tottering on some of them. Um, I don't have plans to lower my vehicle because um, it's my daily. Uh, maybe if uh, someday it's not my daily, we'll look at that. Um, I do acknowledge that, uh, wheel well gaps, um, don't look good. Uh, they're not terrible on this car, uh, but it could, it could be lowered a little bit, but again, not going to do it as my daily. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, uh, your time with me. Hopefully it wasn't a total waste and hopefully I'm able to successfully, uh, edit some of my videos and that they're not just long rambling vlogs. Um, but again, this is raw footage from my first attempt um, at vlogging. And again, uh, my page is Redline Symphony. Um, I've used that name since I was uh, younger because I really
really truly believe that cars sound is 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 like music if you have the right if you have the right vehicle um and again my name is matt matthew maddie whatever you want to call me i'll respond to all of them even uh even other things but uh with that i'm gonna sign off um it's been great to meet you enjoy the rest of your day